Isn't that the guy? That's a, I, that's a famous dude that like the Ukrainian government's like, no, you can't, you can't do that. Like, you can't just like be a jack dude and decide to go and fight in Ukraine. Putin for the Insta, <laughs> for the Instagram likes. I suggest if you have no military training, it's probably a bad idea. I would stay at home and do like your back and buyers or whatever. And there's a broader point I think there to be made about. I really agree with the solidarity that people are showing in Ukraine. I'm kind of down with a lot of the sanctions and stuff, but I can't help but question where that was for Iraq where that is for Yemen, where that is for Palestine. I think there's something we really need to stop and, and look at there about why these degrees of solidarity. Let's watch this. This is a former NATO. To war. I served in Afghanistan, which was itself a particularly brutal conflict, but it is like a bar fight compared to what can happen if the nuclear powers escalate the war, which is currently playing out in Ukraine. It feels like the most dangerous situation in my lifetime. A nuclear threat, a threat to everybody is very apparent. It feels like we're teetering on. I'm just trying to make you look bad. I know. And the worst thing that makes me look bad is forgetting the top of the hour ad break and then having to run it at the half hour. You know what I mean? And then at least I can salvage a little bit by telling you that uh, as long as you subscribe for $5 or for free, you can avoid uh, those ads. Says the dude, multi-millionaire crying, don't care. You're a multi-millionaire, stop crying. Karl Marx burner. Oh God, nothing annoys me more than like people who think they're commies. Like literally who think they're commies, but it's just like, I just hate rich people, bro. There's no, you know, which is fine. I mean, it's good. That's a healthy attitude to have straight up. Okay. You should continue having that. But you are literally just in it for the lifestyle. You're in it in the exact same liberal ways that liberals believe things that they believe in okay you're just like you're you're 12 years old you're angry at the world because your mommy is not giving you enough of an allowance okay and you're in here going mm, f the rich eat the rich whatever the f him guy you're a multimillionaire. stop crying this is all bait law my main account is banned for the c word law two year sub love you king okay, there you go on the edge of that and yet we have people who seem to be viewing it as a kind of football match who are painting their faces and cheerleading where all kinds of particularly war horny takes have been emerging about no fly zones, about pee, different forms of intervention, particular sets of journalists. Oh my God, they're putting double down news there. Oh, that's my favorite. This is literally my favorite clip. Also, my other favorite is when I run the top of the hour ad break because I forgot to run it. Here it is. Are always fairly war horny. They have an ambient level of war horniness because they think war is glamorous and cool. War is appealing for some journalists particularly the journalists who haven't experienced it, because with war can go a particular boost to your career, a higher level of attention, more Twitter followers. I can remember people talking about Donald Trump, how he could start a nuclear war on Twitter. Many of those same people of the blue tick species are using the platform to lobby for a no-fly zone that could lead to nuclear war. The kind of people who would formulate themselves as the grown-ups in the room are treating the risk of nuclear war as if it is just a kind of tit for tat in westminster or in washington dc this is not that this is bigger nuclear war doesn't mean anything good for the world you could survive potentially but you wouldn't want to we actually had some training about this when i was in the army we have to get togged up in our nbc nuclear biological chemical warfare suits with respirators and we'd be made to run up and down and occasionally we'd be CS gassed and we'd be told how to survive a nuclear apocalypse. The slogan was used in the videos, which were all from the 80s, was survive to fight. So you survive the nuclear apocalypse, the positive blast wave comes and you will lay down, assuming you see it coming, and then you stay down for a bit because then the negative blast wave comes back and that passes over you. And then I you are alive to fight. And all I could think about during these training processes was fight over what? Fight over the mutant wastelands, become fucking Mad Max and cut around in your Nissan Micro or a Ford Escort with a gun on top. What is there left? That's the notion of mutually assured destruction, that everybody is destroyed. I mean, that's the underpinning thing. Everybody dies. The problem with stands, Twitter and Twitter stands, war hysteria and all the social media stuff guides you towards just rapid, urgent reaction. It's very often a kind of appeal to emotion that something must be done instantly and clearly things need to be done because people are dying in ukraine but i do think we need to be cautious we need to be exercising reason rather than emotion i understand why there are a set of people who are kind of like let's bomb the 40 mile convoy i understand why that is an appealing idea that we can just go and stop that happening but we need to steer away from the immediate emotional payoff and be reasoned doing that is an act of war on top of the war that's already going and it would potentially escalate this. It would bring into conflict one nuclear power with another nuclear power. And there is a bigger picture, the biggest picture of all, which we have to consider here.
World War One kicked off when one guy was murdered and that led to 20 million deaths because it triggered a series of events which led to gigantic slaughter. I mean, when you look at war's history... So stupid, this is not real footage. I don't know why I was like... I don't know why I got worried, like... <laughs> Historically, there are domino effects and there are so many moving parts in the conflict in Ukraine and each part has its own range of moving parts. So we have to be extremely careful when we're talking about how we intervene and what can be done. In our search for clarification and clarity, it may be the case there's more to be learned from the Cold War warriors than there is from the kind of keyboard warriors. It's definitely worth revisiting what people said who were involved in the periods of extreme tension between the old Soviet bloc and the West. To preserve our civilization in this modern age, a nuclear war cannot be won and must never be fought. I'm absolutely down with the Ukrainian right to resist invasion. It's a war of aggression. Russia have invaded. It's not their country and they should get out. And I respect the Ukrainian right to resist. I think we have to. I think that's the moral position. The Russians should go and leave the Ukrainians to decide their own I future. Agree. Of course, it's more complex than just that. There are lots of different moving parts. NATO has expanded east. That for Putin is used by him to say, NATO is kind of pushing into our sphere of influence and he talks about buffer zones. At the same time, that does not justify what Putin does and he doesn't justify the Putin regime. We've heard a lot of stuff about that Azov battalion and the National Guard, neo-Nazi elements, to some degree were integrated into the Ukrainian armed forces. But the idea espoused by some on the left that because there are neo-Nazis in Ukraine, somehow everyone in Ukraine is a neo-Nazi, is just wrong. There are also other forces in Ukraine. There are various anarchist and progressive left libertarian militias who resist Russian occupation who normally would uh, unironically fight against the Azov battalion. But of course, such is the way when you are invaded by an imperial power at your doorstep, all of a sudden, you don't have any time to literally fight against the, the Azov battalion. And now you have to fight against Vladimir Putin instead. He shit on leftist KW. You guys are so stupid if you think that like my take is anything different than this. I love the, I love the difference between someone going, dude watches the channel after that. And the other guy in the chat going, the other guy going, where the fuck was it? I missed it. But it, someone, people are still talking about how it's real footage colorized by whatever the fuck. I got it. It's real footage. Okay. you, It's fine. No, the person, the, the person that he has to, he has to point to. The person that he has to point to, just like every leftist has to point to, okay, when they have this conversation is, is because of the dominant attitude. No one, no one will... No one will look to your uh, your coverage as charitable unless you literally have to routinely, because if you're speaking uh, about this conflict from a, a heterodox position, that normally the when when everyone else is like full blown, 100 percent. If you agree with Lindsey Graham, STH is wrong yesterday to great today agreeing with a veteran peak Azan. What if you agree with Lindsey Graham, something is wrong yesterday today agreeing with a veteran. Do you think a veteran is the same as Lindsey Graham? There are plenty of veterans that I've had here that offer incredibly insightful perspective. What the f are you talking about? Do you personally think that like if you're a veteran, the, the, your position is completely indefensible? What should we do? Should we just, you know, I've had plenty of veterans on this broadcast. I've had literally Marxist Leninists, like members of the, the, the PSL here that are also veterans. I had a veteran literally this week. I had a veteran, technically. There's a difference between agreeing with a, a veteran who uh, recognizes that, uh, you know, their, their actions in, in Iraq, Afghanistan, numerous other places were bad and wrong, okay? And, and I value their feedback, okay, their insight, because they can humanize the conflict on, on the side of many people who were, you know, lied to, okay, versus a demon like Lindsey Graham, who is simply just posturing, uh, even if Love he knows you, better so stupid Hassan is a general he knows war stuff what does that even mean dude dude don't kill me I'm going to occupation and fascist forces in Ukraine I think we have to look past this seductive thing to kind of look to NATO or look to Russia and try and find on the NATO side a kind of liberal democratic values or on the Russian side anti-imperialist or anti-fascist thing. I think we have to look for another narrative which doesn't internalize NATO good or Russia good. I have to have a much more sophisticated analysis of what's going on here. I have no illusions as some centrist commentators do that NATO is kind of wooferendum or FBPE with guns and missiles. That is not what it is. NATO's interest is stability in the sense that it's stability for Western capitalism.
Oh, I was okay. Never mind. I was about to shit on him, and he goes, "Yeah, it's stability for Western the capitalism." Club of wealthy nations, who are the original founder members, and then increasingly it's other countries who've sought NATO membership. If they're countries which are in the kind of what would have been the Soviet sphere of influence, I understand. I can understand their rationale for wanting to be involved in that because they've been occupied by the Soviets. But again, I find myself just increasingly calling for kind of nuance. I have the dubious honour of having a NATO medal. It's a little thing with a blue ribbon and it says in English and French, in the service of peace and freedom. That's huh. not very accurate. My experience... Yeah, no. NATO, NATO was conducting uh, service and, and freedom when, uh, you know, when we bombed Libya. That was in the service of peace and freedom. When we bombed Libya into rubble, uh, completely destabilized it, and now they do fucking open air uh, slave markets there. That is, of course, once again, another instance where the, the NATO peace and freedom was happening. The experience of NATO is in Afghanistan. I understand and recognize NATO. I was about to say, yeah, like, again, more, more NATO peaceful service in Afghanistan. Is this, there's in, nothing showing, but still. huge amounts of violence in Afghanistan against Afghan people. I have comrades who were in Italy attaching bombs to the fighters which would fly over and bomb Libya and destroy Libya. You can see the results in both those countries of NATO's mission. I suppose I find myself in a weird position where I'm not a fan of NATO and of Putin's regime. I don't see the need to pick between these two poles. While all, everyone's posturing and virtue signaling and doing their hot takes on Twitter, the people who are dying here are working class Russian conscripts and members of the Ukrainian military and Ukrainian civilians. That's the tragedy in all this. There's, there's an element almost of smugness, like Brits and Americans. Of all the people on the planet, Brits and Americans are kind of smugly looking on, going, oh, he's going to get bogged down. He's going to get bogged down in the country. Yeah, without ever, for a brief moment, considering what he's going to get year, bogged down means for the Ukrainian high, people. High. If you truly cared about the safety and security of Ukrainians, you would be literally begging your government to put an end to this in any way, shape, or form they can, okay? But instead, you talk about Ukrainian sovereignty, Ukrainian sovereignty. They want to die. They want to die. They want to go and die. Like, they, they just keep giving them javelins. Keep giving them javelins. Ukrainian sovereignty is nothing when it comes to nuclear war and World War III, which is what Ukrainians are currently demanding. No fly zone. And that's understandable that they're demanding that because they are already in World War III. doesn't matter if it's a nuclear holocaust or not for them because they're already experiencing that currently but we're not giving it to them so what the f is the other option you have to deal with russia through negotiations she get caught up in insurgency with people who don't want him it's like why are you laughing about this you've literally just done this the Kabul airlift was last year to 20 years when you got booted the guy is saying to in 10 minutes everything you have to repeat for three weeks do better yeah except i literally repeat all this all the time and people still come in new people will come in and still yell at me so now and historically this has happened all over the world so i'm not sure why you're being so smug about it condoleezza rice was asked if you invade a sovereign country it's a war crime when you invade a sovereign nation that is a war crime <laughs> i mean i think we're at, at, at just a real basic basic point there well um, I'd, I'd agree it is certainly against every principle of international law and international order you've done all those things yourself and never been held accountable and yet you can just go on tv and say that like the level of just sheer neck to do that i guess part of it is how these people have been reconditioned we kind of saw it with george bush where now he's a harmless old man who just paints a bit rather than a war criminal and we see with alistair campbell out there tweeting away about how terrible vladimir putin is and he helped make the case for iraq and it astonishes me that these people are still allowed on television and are not pariahs they can just kind of nod along like they, they didn't do the same thing themselves but this is happening in a civilized i have to i have to put this this is a perfect opportunity to show you something. This morning, I literally sat in my car in my garage for around 20 to 30 minutes. And that was part of the reason why I was late. Because I saw an insane tweet from Hillary Rodham Clinton. She had the gall, the audacity to say, if Russian leadership would rather not be accused of committing war crimes, they should stop bombing hospitals. And I, I just sat there for like five minutes thinking like, is this, am I, did I hit my head? Did a, did a, did a car crash happen? And I just, uh, I'm now imagining perhaps the most hypocritical statement ever uttered by a human being in a position of power. And of course, after 10 minutes of endlessly going back and forth, I realized, no, that's, she literally did that. Like she, she had the audacity, just like Condoleezza Rice to say this. You know, considering that the administration she was a part of, of course, bombed many, many key infrastructure points and killed many, many civilians, 
and apologized for a rare one bombing of a hospital in Kunduz. Now, the reason why they apologized for that one is because it was a Doctors Without Borders hospital and they killed Europeans, European doctors. Hillary Clinton's husband, Bill Clinton, famously ordered the bombing of a medicine factory in Sudan. Many years later, the country is still yet to recover. The human casualties there are endless as a consequence of that. That's called collateral damage when we do it. Hillary Clinton herself, of course, was almost single-handedly responsible for Libya. Like, almost single-handedly responsible for Libya. Like, she was so insanely... Iraq was wrong, shouldn't have done it, but it's an oversimplification saying the U.S. invasion of a country thousands of miles away from its border is the same as attacking a democratic neighbor. Dog, it's, it's less justifiable. Yes, you never have to consider America doing cleanup in their backyard because we already did that and it happened already and we did the genocides and we won. So you never have to think about that from a, from a point of view where you're like posturing for American security, Okay. It's worse. We already did that in our backyard, and now we're doing it all around the world. It's worse. Even critics understate how catastrophically bad the Hillary Clinton-led NATO bombing of Libya was. Clinton on Gaddafi. We came. We saw. He died. Remember, she laughed about it. Executions, torture, and slave markets persist in Libya, according to the UN. Armed groups execute and torture civilians in Libya in almost complete impunity seven years after the revolution that toppled Muammar Gaddafi, the United Nations Human Rights Office said on Wednesday. Libyans and migrants are often held incommunicado in arbitrary detention in appalling conditions, and reports persist of captured migrants being bought and sold on open slave markets. That's crazy, man. We that's crazy. Hostage by the lead poisoned brains of that's crazy, dude. That's the person that said it, if Russian leadership would rather not be accused of committing war crimes, they should stop bombing hospitals. The real tweet is, if Russian leadership would rather not be accused of committing war crimes when they're bombing hospitals, they should perhaps try being American leaders, okay? That's it. That's the real take. Because it turns out the only countries that can get away with doing this shit are America the and their partners, Libya, like though? Israel, for the record. Or, uh, or Saudi Arabia, for the record. Those are the only countries that can get away with doing shit like this without any sort of scrutiny. And if you think, if you think that what I'm saying right now is in any way, shape, or form a, a, uh, a way to defend Russia, you are brain diseased. And you have to also admit that you think it's okay when America does it. Because I despise when America does this. Okay? So, of course, I despise when Russia does it, too. So, just remember that. So, while on the one hand, I call exactly what Russia is doing, exactly what it is, unjustifiable and immoral, you, on the other hand, want to use this as an opportunity to launder American goodwill and morality. It is disgusting. You are, if you do this, if you like are like Hillary Clinton, you are washing your hands with Ukrainian blood, okay? Please check, this was fake. Check it as a Russian, I ask you what, check what? ASB military suspended on Twitter. <laughs> Dude, it's just, you can't, you will never, I mean, they were doing Russian disinformation, for sure, at certain points. They've, they've said like really fucked up and really stupid shit before, but like you can't, you can't have any, like there is no value in seeing the Russian side here in the eyes of, of uh, the Western world, which I think is insane okay i do believe that we should see at least some level of russian propaganda so we at the very least understand what the f they're thinking but oh my lord nope unacceptable part of the world <gasps> how could this happen here but there's no reflection on like why in those places which are uncivilized why there is conflict there or war there why there is authoritarianism and dictatorship there and in many cases it's because they were colonized Based government were dollars. imposed because they've been brutally oppressed because different sides have been played off against each other funded by foreign powers i find myself in a strange position of, of looking at you belgium fake country not so fake when it comes to, you know, cutting people's hands and shit, doing genocide. At Hassan Abbey, Belgium. The hey, you get... The virus in their bio Listen labs. to me. Are we at risk of Ligma? Yeah, that's right. You look, you look right into my eyes, Belgium.
of liking something before it was cool, being anti-war. And now all of a sudden, loads of people who've never uttered a word about Yemen or Palestine or Afghanistan are invoking like Tony Benn type speeches. It could be a kind of entry point for people to question wars more generally, because the things which are happening in Ukraine now. Yes, that is the other side of this, is that I believe that human, val human lives are valuable no matter what, no matter where they are, okay? And that's precisely why I do use this as an opportunity to try to get you to understand the anger that you feel, the frustration that you feel towards Russia's unjustifiable acts of violence in Ukraine. You, I use that. I certainly use that. I've done enough on covering it from the point of view of like it being unjustifiable. But then also Seven as wheels. a part of what I want to do, as a part of what my duty is, I think, I need to use that for you to basically question the jingoistic attitudes that have been... Uh, brain broken into your skull, okay? Because the overwhelming propaganda True. is the reason why you have this kind of attitude that you believe that like America is always the moral force for good. Even American imperialism, like when I when people, like so many people on the internet that claim to be leftists were unironically turning around and saying like one NATO is a defensive you know agreement, True. which of course they uh, personally don't understand what like NATO has done in the past, and that's fine. They haven't seen the history of it, and they don't understand why it was created or why it was cultivated. They don't get it, okay? But that's one thing. But the claim that like the civilizing force of American imperialism is far preferable to the brutality of Russian imperialism? Are you kidding me, dude? How can you be a leftist and say such disgusting things? I spit on your leftist credentials. You are not a you are not, not even in any way, shape, or form a progressive. That's disgusting. 1,000% preferable? Shut the f up. Holy shit. That is incredible, dude. That is incredible. It's one thing to be, to, you know, eat the propaganda and believe it when it comes to, when it comes to f NATO, okay? But you are no different than the f monarchist, royalist uh, colonizers when you say that. Because that is precisely the attitude Slippity of the slap. average colonial underling plan. okay that goes to one of the many colonies and rips and pillages to get his marks and then comes back a man that is disgusting dude to say that american imperialism is actually far preferable and and uh the the source for good you unironically took the propaganda and you have that same kind of western supremacist attitude that you normally would criticize otherwise ben shapiro on how is that any different than uh look at the way we treat our gays here in comparison to uh how you know iran treats their gays like you've already you have already taken that you've taken that propaganda stop praising putin shut up were done in Iraq, in some cases worse things, over a much longer period. I mean, we're six, seven days into this illegal invasion by a foreign power, and that is what happened in Iraq. We had the weird spectacle of some very mainstream media channels almost celebrating, like, how do you make a Molotov cocktail in five easy steps? I have friends who are from Derry in Northern Ireland, and they're doing that kind of, you know, that kind of monkey meme where it's awkward. Like people who lived through British occupation, who would- Wait, Oh, this is a movie. Be out throwing Molotov cocktails and rocks at occupying troops who are like, oh, this is cool now. And I think you could take that lesson, extrapolate it, and you could look at Palestine, you could look at people resisting occupation. And a lot of those people are like, what? This is, why was it not okay where we did it? And I think that it's a fair point to make. Like, why is it that now it's celebrated? Yeah. If you were to rise up, dude, if you took up arms right now, by the way, for as much as I can absolutely shit on a particular YouTube essayist or whatever. Like, there is some good that they've done, and I will always stand by that, like raising money for Palestinian children, the funds in, in uh, Palestine, straight up. You have to absolutely, uh, absolutely admit that that is an incredibly good thing to do, that most people would never do that. And then also on top of that, uh, they fucking months, will call you a terrorist. I think they called, content. like, the serfs a terrorist, too. They called, the they said that they were funding place. a lot of the neoliberals literally work. turned around and said that like Vosh and the Serfs were terrorists and they were funding terrorism. Disgusting. I spit on those animals, okay? I spit on them and I hope their seven lineages uh, feel, the, feel a fraction of the pain that they think is justifiable on this planet when it comes to victims of, of imperialist powers. Now, that having said that, okay, if you were to turn around and join forces with, if you were to turn around and like join forces with Hamas, Okay, immediately, it's over. You're a terrorist forever. 
you're going to jail. You're going to die immediately. And you're going to jail if you don't die. That's the preferable outcome in that situation. You're going to be tortured in a CIA black site and then probably put in uh, Guantanamo Bay for uh, the rest of your life. So that's straight up what is going on in that situation, you know? But that doesn't happen with, with Ukraine. Why? Here's the perfect neoliberal neocon argument of being on the right side. Funny enough, he blames Putin for, on the Clintons for not going far enough. It's like arguing which was worse, heroin or fentanyl, both get you killed. Andrei Kozidev, Yeltsin's first top diplomat, speaks about Putin's disastrous war in Ukraine and why the revisionist history about NATO enlargement is all wrong. Oh, God, I don't want to get... I do not want to read this. Lol, I'm a baby. <laughs> Good one. Anyway, let's finish this. But, yeah, if you were to join, like, the Afghan forces, dude, can you imagine joining the Afghan forces? Not against the USSR. If you join the Afghan forces against the USSR, you might be a part of the CIA. If you join those very same Afghan forces 20 years later against the American government then you're a terrorist. And that's the difference. That's it. That's the difference. That's why so many people are uh, doing an international call to arms and celebrating everybody that's going See, and joining Ukraine. Uh, Ukrainians so in defending Ukraine. In what are news pieces, we've seen a steady procession of characters. Yeah, there's like literally fucking New Yorkers that are currently in jail for throwing uh, handmade Molotov cocktails at, at empty cop cars during the Black Lives Matter uh, protest. There's like a lawyer that literally is just in forever jail. Yeah. A lot changes in 20 years, no? Yeah, dude, exactly. No, totally. Yeah, changes when America decides, no, these are our enemies now. Turning up at the Ukrainian embassy, Jim bros with no military training, going, I want to go and fight in Ukraine. Fight Putin for the Insta. <laughs> I've heard that, yeah, isn't that the guy that like... Characters turning up at the Ukrainian embassy, Jim bros with no military training, going, I want to go and fight in Ukraine. Fight. Isn't that the guy that's a, I, that's a famous dude that, like, the Ukrainian government's like, no, you can't, you can't do that. Like, you can't just, like, be a jack dude and decide to go and fight in Ukraine. Putin for the Insta, <laughs> for the Instagram likes. I suggest if you have no military training, it's probably a bad idea. I would stay at home and do, like, your back and buyers or whatever. And there's a broader point, I think, there to be made about, I really agree with the solidarity that people are showing Ukraine. I'm kind of down with a lot of the sanctions and stuff, but I can't help but question where that was for Iraq where that is for Yemen, where that is for Palestine. I think there's some that we really need to stop and, and look at there about why these degrees of solidarity. Good guy, he had a whole truck full of supplies, losers on Reddit mocked him. I mean, I, I guess he like wanted to do humanitarian aid or something um, as well. So that's good. And, and he's still going, I think, with like all the aid. And sanction are being applied to, applied to Russia. They never tried to do that with Tony Blair and George Bush in the Iraq war. And I think we have to have a little bit of self-reflection about why that is. We've seen it just in the last seven days, the lack of nuance and the presence of misinformation, one-sided yes. media, yeah, and it's more yeah, important than ever to support independent I love, media and alternative voice. I f love Double Down News, man. They're such, man, everybody always says, like, I hate the oi bruvs or whatever, and I'm bravophobic, but I f love my, my communist and, and socialist leftist bruvs so much. Jezza, I still stand with and will stand with in perpetuity. You know what I mean? I love my oi bravs. Class warfare, simple as. No war, but class war, brav. Simple as. VTech made a gaming chair for toddlers who have Twitch aspirations. Thankfully, the chair teaches kids about letters and phonics, phonics instead of Fortnite and Overwatch. Finally, the juicers can, you know, sit on a gaming chair and feel exactly like Felix. Look at that, dude. Finally. Yeah. We want Fortnite. We want Fortnite. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>